Hi, welcome to Marketing Maker. My name is Mark Taylor. Today we're going to be looking at uh, some soapstone some, and, and some of my soapstone carvings. The first thing though, if you're going to be working on your garage floor, go ahead and paint some flames on your garage floor. It just make you feel better. So what we're going to do is I'll bring you down here and show you up close some soapstone. Okay, let's take a closer look at the soapstone. You can see it does have texture to it in some areas. You can see this is where I, I guess a big saw cut away at it. This looks like it was the surface that was facing up. Now the reason why it's called soapstone is it has a high talc and it is kind of slippery. So it, as you produce dust, uh, you want to be careful because it, if you have a concrete floor, it'll make your floor slippery. So uh, it's just not sweeping. You'll, you'll end up having to mop. <clears throat> Um, let me show you a little bit how this will cut. I'll use the round side of this file. Files always work on the push. You, you don't pull a file. You push a file. So it gives you little bit of an idea of how the file works. Here's a um, exacto knife and you can you can see how it comes in and, and it does cut. So this is okay for detail. The way you usually start off with is um, either sawing, and you can see this is regular wood saw. Just saw into, and and you know it's a little harder than uh, wood, but you just let the weight of the saw do it. You don't try to power your way through it. Now, most of the time. You start off with what's called the point. By placing it in place and you give it a little tap right on the back there and and usually this little piece of what right here would just fly right off. Pop. Most of them though most of the tools I have here are just common tools that you'll have around your house. I got a small sledge. This actually came with this set of stone chisels. Well, I got these from uh, uh, Creative Sculpture, I think, out of New York. There's another place in Florida um, that sells sculpture tools. There's a bunch of places. So you just had need to get online and look at uh, stone carving supplies. I know that the art supply store Blick uh, carries all this stuff. So this guy here is called the point. And that has a bunch of points on it. Multi-point. There's a flat. And the even wider flat. And then we got some round files. Some more coarser than others. A standard half round, flat on one side, rasp. And this baby, this 
is actually the most expensive tool that I have for stone carving, and it's an Italian marble file. Um, it's a little pricey, but it is so worth the money. This thing makes working with soapstone a pleasure. We got a bunch of these little, these little files and they all have different shapes and curves. Some of them are round, some of them are flat. Uh, some are pointed, some are blunt on the end. So they're good for detail. Sanding sponge. Regular old sandpaper. Believe it or not, just a regular old handsaw. I use this one specifically for stone, for soapstone. And you can use woodworking tools with soapstone without a problem. You wouldn't want to use, after cutting soapstone, you wouldn't want to put this on uh, or cut wood with it. So you don't want to use your good saw. Just buy a $10 saw and just designate it toward soapstone. This is cut off of my blue jeans, old blue jeans. I filled it with sand, sewed it shut, and make, makes a, a decent like sandbag. And you need a sandbag when you're working with soapstone because you really can't put them in a vise. They're so oddly shaped. They come in all kinds of shapes and weights. <clears throat> and uh, so having these sandbags, there's a big one, really are helpful to anchor your stone in while you're working. I've done a little bit over here. Been working on that guy. I want the gargoyle. And I just started off with. Um, the, the natural shape of it did come out like this it had a little bit of a ridge right here so it reminded me of a face just looking at the raw end of it coming out you know it was when I say raw like this <clears throat> so it already had a little bit of a shape to it and a lot of times that's what I'll do I will look at the raw edge of the stone some of them come you know really milled out flat like this <clears throat> which then you have to come up with a plan but a lot of times I'll just look at the stone and and wait for my eyes to see something within the stone or as a lot of people say I'll let the stone tell me what it wants to be
So I have a lot of sanding to do, but just so you kind of get an idea, I got some water here. And if you wet the stone, you can kind of see where, you know, where you're going, what the grain looks like. you get the water all in all the little cracks there so because the fine sanding will take all those little fine things out and you can see where the grain is you can see what it looks like kind of looking like a gargoyle and that's what I was going for you can see the grain is, is uh Either the grain is very light up here or that's um, crushed stone. Sometimes when you you hit it, you can crush it and sanding will actually take that out. You can see what, what the rest of the stone looks like. Here are some of the stone sculptures that I've done in the past. We'll start off with uh, these pink ones here. The lighter the soapstone, the easier it crumbles, the softer it is, and the harder it is to work, believe it or not. It is so soft that it's crumbly. So I had a 20 pound block of it and um, I was able to find some small pieces out of it that wasn't too crumbly that I could actually work. This was the first piece that I did and I'll get up close so you can see, see these dark spots in it here? Super hard. So it's, it's a, uh, dark it's hard in general but those spots actually stand a little proud actually very proud on this piece here you can see I added a little bit of a accent here to, to uh, complement that curve Here's a, a, a dark stone. The green I found fairly easy to carve. The brown was wonderful to carve. You can see that, you know, they come in a bizarre shape sometimes and uh, you just have to figure out how you're gonna work with it sometimes. This is a piece of um, alabaster. I actually used a Dremel tool. Now alabaster is harder than soapstone. Uh, but with a diamond bit, it was pretty easy to work with. You can see how shiny this is. I used both on this one and this one here. Krylon uh, clear coat and then came back and scratched in a pattern. <clears throat> the, the reason why I started scratching in patterns is I actually had uh, done a show called Fall Into the Arts in Leesburg, Virginia. And a lady let another lady up and she was blind and she felt the sculptures. She said, can I, put, can I touch them? I said, sure. She was felt them and felt the textures and, and different shapes. Uh, and she was very impressed with it. She saw it was beautiful, even though she was blind. And so that encouraged me to put, add texture into the things that I carved. Um, you know, this is textured right here. This was a, a greenish, a uh, chunk of soapstone. This is alabaster. 
stylized owl. This bad boy, he's pretty heavy. <clears throat> I actually had him break. The soapstone was soft right across here and it broke. And I was able to cut it back a little bit and epoxy it back together with soapstone in the epoxy and it, it blended pretty good. This is a hawk or eagle that I did. That's my biggest piece. You can see the curves and lines that are in it. I'll try to get up close to where you can see. You can see grain and texture. It's actually got gold through it in different places. All the pieces, except for the two with the spray paint on them, I used a paste wax. I heated up the stone either in the oven or with a torch and used paste wax. And of course, with any three-dimensional art, when you change the lighting, a lot of times it can have a very, very different look depending on the shadow lines. So back to this guy, work in progress. I'll continue to work on this. I'm not going to finish him for this video, but I, when I do finish him, and I'm going to do this, this whole thing is going to be a little gargoyle. Um, I will put it on my Instagram. So my Instagram is Mark D Maker, and uh, I'll put them on there. For you all that are interested in giving this a try, this, this set was available on uh, Blick Art Supply. Uh, I just looked it up for uh, around uh, $89. That's everything you see there. This is just a rasp. Um, this set on Amazon was $19. Uh, these little stone files. Um, and this hand cut Italian marble file. There's all different types. But for one this big, you can expect um, pretty close to $100 for it. They have them as cheap as $50. They're smaller. Um, but this is this is a pretty big one and that was a hundred dollars and well worth the price now you can use regular wood chisels on these as well um, a handsaw you can use a hacksaw um, even the diamond impregnated uh, hacksaw blades they're round they, they fly through this soapstone like nothing. So, if you're interested, give it a try. Hopefully you'll find some stone supplier close to you. Um, my stones either come from New York or from Florida, and it shipping costs as much as the stone. So, a chunk like this would be $20. $20 to get it shipped to me. Well, thank you for watching the video. Don't forget to check out my Instagram, Mark D Maker. Please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time.